Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Fantasy 101. I am here with Antonio. I am Owen. We're going to be giving you the basics. We've covered a few of the major topics. We're going to be going to the more advanced ones for players who want that advantage in fantasy and uh, are a bit more comfortable with their skills and uh, how they can manage a fantasy team. Yeah, and that means trading. So trading is generally the way that you can get ahead the most in fantasy. If you know what you're doing and other players don't, you, this is an easy way for you to um, gain an advantage on the rest of the players in your league. You know, if you're adding value from somebody else's team onto yours and they're losing value, that's just separating you way more from them than if, say, you're just picking somebody off of waivers. So this can also be a slippery slope, as Owen said in the last episode, because you can also lose trades, which means that you are going lower down the rankings than these guys. And that's what we want to help you uh, stop here. So let me share my screen really quickly. We're going to just go and look at my team for now. Um, the main things to remember when you're trading are there are things called buy low and sell high. Mm. So the main points when you want to trade for a player are after they've been doing poorly for a while. The main points when you want to sell a player from your team or trade one away is when they've been playing very well. So these are indicated by the terms buy low and sell high. These are very simple terms uh, and are going to be the ground rules when you're trading players um, along your fantasy year. For instance, this year, Elias Pedersen has been averaging 2.4 points. Now, over the last seven days, he's been averaging 2.8. So he's on a high right now. So he'd be primed for me to sell him. Somebody that's even higher on a high is Joel Pavelski, who's been averaging 6.6 .6 over the last seven days, but over the last, over 2022, only 3.5. So he's almost doubled his production over these last seven days compared to the rest of the year. So if I wanted to go trade him, I'm going to go to another team and I'm going to look at somebody who's possibly doing poorly. So let me look at, let me pick on Owen here. Actually, I'm going to go to somewhere non-biased, okay? Uh, <laughs> Because I, I don't I don't want him to have any bias here. So let's let's pick out the team that's currently doing the best in our league. Fullerton Taylors. He's actually one of the fans. Um, you know, he had a pretty solid draft. I think his main piece here was the guy that I don't like to talk about, um, Alexander Ovechkin. Uh, however, if we look at at season averages, yes, Ovechkin is his best player. Um, somebody I like from his team is Drew Doughty. So I'm gonna go to his team. And how's Doughty been doing? Over his last seven days, he's been doing pretty well. So I think I'm going to wait to trade for him, considering he's averaging 5.7 over those last days. Seth Jones would be an even worse trade for me. Uh, let's go to 15 days, actually, because I, I, like, I like the two-week span. Uh, let's see who's been doing poorly. So Patrick Kane, he's a guy that I would actually trade for. Look at him. He's only averaging two over the last 15 days compared to his full season where he is averaging four. So he's literally half his production currently as he would normally have. So I'm going to go Patrick Kane and let me try and trade him for Joel Pavelski. Considering their actual average is pretty similar, this is actually not a terrible trade. Obviously, if you know anything about anything about fantasy, you would know that Patrick Kane is an elite player and you would not necessarily want to be getting rid of him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my waiver ad here in Ryan Hartman, who's been doing better than Pavelski recently, actually. And I'm going to try and trade those two to get Kaner. All right. And just like that, I finished my trade. So to put it in really simple terms, basically, Antonio picked a guy who through the last seven days is playing much worse than he actually is. And he's using two guys who are playing much better than they actually are. But the tricky thing is, is you never really know when someone is actually just playing down or playing up because with with the physically tasking sport like hockey, sometimes they could just be staying down. But um, exactly. more often than not, a trade like this, obviously, it's a very good trade for Antonio, but uh, it, it, it is a super slippery tro slope uh, trading. Yeah, definitely. And just a couple other things that I wanted to mention about that. Um especially with older players, if you're trading, if they're on a low, oh, I, tend to, I tend to pay less attention to them on a low. Like Kaner, he is getting up there in age, but he's not so much uh, old that I wouldn't trade for him anymore. But say somebody's 36 and they've been having a slow season, I would avoid that because, um, you know, with the age and being physically taxing, 
Um, you generally could just be slowing down in your career, just dropping off a little bit. Likewise with younger players, if I have somebody who's 22 and he he's in his second season and he's start, got off to an amazing start and he's looking very consistent and I've watched a couple of the games he's played in and he's looking good, he's getting assists, he's getting goals. I'm not going to trade that away because that's what's called a breakout season, right? And you don't you don't trade somebody on a breakout season um, because that's their value is just exponential. And even if they drop off a little bit, they're probably higher than where you expected them anyway. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. So I know this one was a little bit of a shorter episode than the other ones we've had, but we wanted to keep these between five and ten minutes. Um, so we're trying to stay consistent with that. And if you want any more help, we do have weekly podcasts coming out as well as Instagram help at fantasy hockey pucks, uh, as well as, um, our personal rankings. And as well, if you want any somewhat helpful, uh, advice on a specific trade, um, you can either use a fantasy analyzer online. We do not recommend that. However, because those tend to be very iffy. Uh, just like their the ADP for drafting. And instead, we would recommend that you DM us on Instagram and we will get back to you within the day, uh, so long as you're not t- uh, DMing us at like 6 a.m. in the morning when we're not quite up <laughs> yet. Anyway, that's going to come to the end of this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. We will have one last episode in this series. Uh, and again, if you have any other questions about helping you set up or during your fantasy year, we are open to DMs. Anything else, Owen? No, but I, I just cannot stress enough how how much contacting us is really n- no worry. Like, we're not going to charge anything. Like, you can just message us literally anything you can. Po- it could be you're, you're picking between two different team names and you don't know which one is the best. We will help you with that. N- no, no cost, perfectly free. Just like subscribing to the YouTube. I mean, it's free. You, know, you don't have to do anything for it. But uh, yeah, you reaching out to us, no no bad can come from it. If anything, you just hear what we have to say and you don't take the advice, which is fine. All right. So with that, this is going to be Antonio and Owen signing out for the episode. Hope you guys have a good day uh, or night, whatever time it is for you guys. uh, And have a good one.